Hey guys, it's Freddy Tech back with another video from CFL Tech. Today we have the Google TV streamer in-house. Now we did get this from Best Buy. We got it in the porcelain color, so we were able to get it rather quickly. Now we do hear at the time of this video that there are delays with the Google Store getting this item in the porcelain or hazel colors. Now the porcelain is showing about 30 days out for delivery right now, and the hazel version is back ordered. So there's a notify me option right now for that color. So that's rather interesting. We don't know what the delay is, but you can get it right now at the time of this video from Amazon and Best Buy. And we'll have those links down below for you if you're interested in getting this $100 device from Google. Now, is it worth $100? That's a really good question. Now we do have the box. We have it unboxed already. Uh, I just want to throw this out there about the box itself that it came in. It's a whole new look with no longer showing Chromecast. We knew that was happening. No longer Chromecast branding. It is now gone. It's Google TV streamer. Now the box itself seems a little bit on the flimsy side for Google. Definitely something new. We're not used to that. Probably a good recycle box here going on. The materials used, which is great. But overall, this was kind of open, which was a surprise. Um, the box from Best Buy was sealed, so it doesn't look like someone tampered with it in transit. It does look like um, this was undone, and the tab, this was unnecessary to pull because it was already undone. So it looks like the adhesive is weak. Don't know if that's why there's a delay right now from Google. Maybe they're redoing the packaging for these. Just a thought. Don't know if that's for sure. Not confirmed. Just speculation on that. Maybe, you know, getting it from Best Buy and Amazon, they have the initial inventory that they're going through. We'll see if they have a delay soon, if there is a backup due to packaging or some kind of manufacturing delay, but we don't know what the reason is, but here we go. Could be popularity too, but for $100, that's questionable when you can get other devices for about half the price. Now you have the power brick, the remote, the device itself that houses all the smarts, and you have the cable here, which is USB-C power cable. So let's look at the remote here. And we have the original remote from the Chromecast with Google TV. As you can see, it is definitely longer now with the new one. And you have the old one here. We have the specs up, by the way, for the new device as we go through this. So you can see what it contains directly from the Google store. We have that information up as we go here. So you can see the remotes very similar in the shape and the look of that and the bi-directional you know, button up top there for the arrow button. And you have the back button in the left corner. You have the assistant button in the top right here. You have the home button in the top right for the new one. And you have the microphone button here on the left side. So that's interesting. The home button is now on the top right compared to the left side here. The big difference is the volume up and down now is on the front of the remote versus the side. So some people may prefer the side. I found that this was a little bit kind of slippery sometimes, you would miss it. Uh, I do think this is better on the front, personal preference. And you have the dedicated YouTube and Netflix, and you have the power buttons here, and you have a start button, which is interesting. This now can be programmable. So you have smart home access now to your devices on your screen in the top right corner of your uh, interface, so which is gonna, be, it's interesting now. So that's a very nice feature, but you have several ways to program this. We'll show you that in the settings. And you also have now a couple of batteries, the AAA batteries that come with it. We had that uh, separated earlier, but there you go. They kind of match the device, which is interesting, <laughs> interesting touch. So what we're gonna look at now is the device itself and show you the ports. Now you have the HDMI, port, but no HDMI cable in the box. So that you have to be aware of. You will need to supply your own. So that is something they kind of, you know, you wonder if they could have put that in there for $100. They do sell the cable on their website, and I believe they're offering right now a $10 discount to buy the cable directly from them. But if you have one lying around, use that. You have the ethernet, now gigabit port for ethernet, which is the first now with the dongle version of this device that was behind your TV. You did not have a port option. So this is kind of nice now that you have this stand, you know, device that sits on its own on your TV stand or wherever you want to put it. Now you have the option for the ethernet. If you have your gateway right nearby, great. You have the uh, power adapter here, the USB-C, and you have a button here now that you can use to find your remote. So if it gets lost in your uh, couch cushions, hit that button, you should hear it chirp. 
which is something that should they should have done a while ago, but now they have it. And then on the bottom here, you have a rubberized, non-skid, uh, grippy surface here. So it's really nice. It should hold well. Now, if you have a dusty surface that you put this on, all bets are off that it won't slide. You have to make sure that the surface is clean of any dust and stuff like that. So it'll hold really well. But it's a nice shape. It's like a pill shape. Definitely Google-shaped device. So it feels very solid overall. So we do like that. Here's some booklets that you probably will not need. And we have the cable. It's a pretty good length of cable here, which is nice to see. So it should work well putting it on your TV stand or if you mount it somewhere behind your TV on the wall. So that will should work out really well. So USB-C, USB-A. So there you go. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and take a look at this device on the TV to show you the performance and see how it looks compared to the old Google Chromecast, Google Chromecast with Google TV to see if the performance is up. We'd have the specs up, so if you wanna roll back, check those out, see what they're about. But let's get right into it right now and see what this looks like on the TV. All right, guys, you have the device set up here on our Samsung TV and the setup process was very easy. We did use the QR code option that they have. So it brought in all of the information, all of the account settings from other devices that we've had. So very easy for us, but should you run into any issues, they do appear to have better support these days. So hopefully you don't have to use it, but should you, it should work out well for you. Overall though, if you have an account with Google before, it should go very smoothly. So that was very nice. And it was a system update out of the box. So the whole process took a little under 10 minutes maybe, and we were up and running, so very smooth. Now we have the device up. Let's take a look here at the live tab and see the live TV stations here, the channels. Now Google TV Free Play was renamed recently from Free Channels or Free TV. It is now TV Free Play. So you'll see this update rolling out on all Google TV devices here in the coming days and weeks. So if you haven't received that yet, and you don't have the latest Google TV streamer, you should be seeing that update rolling out. Just be patient. So let's look at some of the channels here. There's 157 for Google TV or Free Play. Now, let's see here how quick this uh, scrolls and it looks like it's very smooth now with the four gigs of RAM and the RAM does make a difference. So that's really important when it comes to any of these devices, uh, any device for that matter. Let's go into one of these uh, channels here and see how quick it loads. Or Connors, it already loaded up there. So very smooth and that's on Wi-Fi. So we'll do a speed test here in a, a little bit as well to show you the speeds on Wi-Fi and see what we're getting here. But we bet it's probably going to be about three to 400 down on the one gig uh, plan that we have. So let's see here, it scrolls very nice. Now there's over 800 channels in the Google TV ecosystem when they pull in, you know, when you pull in all of the other services like Philo and Pluto and anything else, it's a total of about 800 plus channels. So it's impressive and their service gets better and better. Google TV platform is very good. So let's go down and take a look at the settings and see what we have here about the device. So we're gonna go into system, we're gonna to go to about, and there you go, device name is Google TV Streamer, and you have, again, model Google TV Streamer, Android version is 14, we have the security patch from August, so it is up to date for this device. So there you go, that's the information about that, and let's go to storage next and see what we have. Looks like we have 26 gigabytes left of the 32 of the storage, so not bad. Of course, when you um, have the apps on here, uh, you're going to have you know some space taken out of the box. That's just a given. But nice storage here if you want to install a good amount of streaming device or streaming apps. So you have plenty of storage. So that's always good to see. They did up that as well. And let's go take a look now at the um, button here, the star button. Now it's under settings, remote and accessories. So let's go to set up remote buttons, go down to customizable button. Now we already have it set to Google Home and we'll show you how that looks because that will be for your smart home devices, which is very nice. So let's go ahead and take a look now and do a command. Let's go back home and let's go ahead and do a command here with the assistant so we can go ahead and see what we get. Turn on front door light. So it did say all right, turning on the front door light that is now on. So that is great to see. 
Now, we do have the volume muted uh, due to concerns of anything playing for copyright and stuff like that. And also not to be loud with background. So let's go now to look at the, let's go over to the settings section here. Now you'll see your, uh, Google Home. We did set that up with the button. So if you do hit the button, it will bring it up as well. And if you, there you go. And let's go look at the light that we just turned on here. Now we have the uh, front door light. There it is. It's on at only 4%, but it's on. Let's go hit that and turn it off with the enter button. So there it is now off. So there you go. But there's all of the smart home uh, devices there, which is really nice to see. So very cool. And that is now the new feature. And you'll see that with the update rolling out for the other Google TV devices as well. So that is something that you will see roll out. So it's a nice new addition now for the smart home option through the Google Home app. So you need to have an account with Google Home, have your home set up in there, use the same account that you use there for the Google Home app that's tied to this account and you'll be good to go. So let's go now and take a look at the speed test here on the Wi-Fi. And let's run this and see what we're getting here. All right, let's go ahead and start this test. And we'll see what kind of speeds we're getting. And we got the ping here of 15.5 milliseconds and we have jitter of 8.3. So let's see, we're getting over 300 already. Should eclipse maybe 400. Let's see, 372. So 372 down, kind of where we thought. And let's see, upload speed with fiber. Should be pretty close to symmetrical, even on Wi-Fi. Now, of course, coming into the gateway, it's symmetrical, um, you know, directly to the gateway. Not necessarily will be symmetrical on any Wi-Fi devices, but not bad at all. Definitely enough to do 8K. Uh, so really good speeds on Wi-Fi. And if you connect the Ethernet cable, that's gig speeds now. So I'm thinking you'll probably get six to 700 down with a one gig plan with fiber. So very nice. So let's go back to the home settings here, home section, and let's just do some scrolling here um, under the For You, and let's see how quick this thing scrolls. Now we have the uh, button held down. Look at this thing move. There are no hiccups whatsoever. It is smooth, and we did notice it was very snappy right out of the box, which was nice. So you have your library there for any uh, movies that you have saved. Uh, we just have a few there. Um, we also have the live tab. We took a look at that. Now, of course, you can rearrange your apps. This is good with any Google TV device, not just this one. But you can reorder how you ever, however you like. So if you want to move Disney, you can just move it around like that. Hit the enter button one more time or hit done. And there you go. It is now moved. But a lot of different options on here. This ecosystem is getting better and better. And Google wants to be the leader when it comes to uh, you know, Google TV and being a free ad supported TV leader as well as they continue to add more and more free channels. This is really becoming a very good ecosystem. Now, Roku just released a brand new 4K Ultra, um, their new Roku Ultra 2024 device right around the same time Google released the streamer. So it's probably, you know, a device that's competing if there's anything to compare. Now the on uh, Google TV device from Walmart, we did the video, the Pro Box. Check that video out if you want to see the comparison. It'll be linked down in the description section. Also at the end of this video, you'll see a thumbnail for it. So if you want to click on that to watch it, to do a comparison, please do so. Hopefully this video helped you out. We do like this, this device is definitely approved. If you want the Google ecosystem, you want a device directly from Google, all of their goodness is baked in. If you're okay with spending the $100 and it's in the budget, it is recommended if you want the true Google experience. The hardware is very nice, the new design. We do like that a lot. The, the gigabit uh, ethernet port is very nice. The remote finder, so the four gigs of RAM. So the processor is great. So a lot of good things to like about this. So it is approved if you are okay with spending the $100, but also the other device from Walmart is very good as well for half the price. So it's your choice depending on the budget, but this is definitely recommended. It's a great device. It's smooth as butter. We do like it. So there you go. Put your comments down below and your thoughts on this. Hopefully this video helped you out. Also, if it's your first time here on the channel, please hit the subscribe button. Also hit the notification bell so you know the next video drops in CFL Tech. 
Freddy Tech checking out of this one. Soon to be back with another. Take care.